One of the biggest differences between Britain and the United States of America is the role that religion plays in the lives of its people. In America, a far higher proportion of people go to church and describe themselves as religious. There are thousands of religious TV and radio stations, and the airwaves seem to be dominated by preachers and tele-evangelists. But here too, secular believers are keen to make their voices heard. Thanks for joining us today. What we try and do is bring the atheist viewpoint to the American public, which doesn't get the atheist viewpoint anywhere on national television. There are no, there are no all atheist programs where we have control of the content, we have control of the issues, and what gets said. We think this is very important for America. One of the things that we hear about from atheists is that I just never knew you people existed, you know. And so I think one one really important function that this show and our show and, and atheists, so the American atheist, atheists perform, is that first of all we let other atheists know that we're here. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Atheist Viewpoint. My name is Ellen Johnson. I'm the president of American Atheists, and this is 30 million Americans out of a population of about 285 million are not religious, but they don't have access to programming that talks about atheism with two atheists co-hosting the program. But in America, on any given day, if you are channel surfing, you will see tons of religious programming, all by religious people, all about religion, giving the religious viewpoint, and that influences what happens in America. You know the. the the, as long as the President of the United States, Dennis, says that we should all engage in prayer to this all-powerful God, we can only ask, well, where was God when this happened? Why didn't God help people? So Today we're dealing with the issue of Hurricane Katrina. And why should that be of concern of American atheists? Because, you know, whenever you have a natural disaster, uh, number one, there's call for prayer. It's another excuse for the religious people in government to impose their religion, and it's the, usually the Judeo-Christian point of view, uh, on the rest of the public to act in the name of religion, to pander to religion. A few years ago, secular groups in America joined together for what they called the first ever godless march on Washington. Ellen Johnson was the organizer and the first speaker, and the idea was to make America sit up and take notice. Actually, this is a march for all Americans. All Americans are godless Americans because there is no God. It was really a, a day of a pride and recognition to uh, talk about, you know, who we are to come together as a movement to bring the different groups together and, uh, you know, do something for the atheists in America. And again, like I said, just, we wanted to see if it would be successful and everybody loved it. They want another one right away. The motto of the Godless Americans March on Washington declares that we are free, proud and on the move. At the heart of the U.S. Constitution is the principle of the separation of church and state, the idea that there should be no established religion in the country. It's a principle that American atheists want to ensure is strictly upheld. It's important that the government not establish religion in any way whether it's the, 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 the president of the United States talking up religion or denigrating people who are not religious, funding through tax dollars, religious uh, organizations, saying they don't have to pay taxes, giving them special privileges or special rights. So we work, we file lawsuits whenever the government does things that favor religion in that way or treat it, gives it special rights in that way that other people don't have. We file lawsuits as one of the things that we do to keep that separation, what Thomas Jefferson called a wall of separation between state and church.